I have a bone disease called osteogenesis imperfecta. Osteo meaning bone, genesis meaning genetic or in the beginning, and imperfecta means mm, not exactly perfect, but then who is? <laughs> I was so fragile that I could sneeze and break a rib. I could hiccup and break a rib. Coughing extensively could break a rib. And this was a constant challenge. They estimate about 500 bones broken, cracked, you know, hairline fractures or complete fractures. The doctors basically said I would die within the first year of birth because when a baby breaks a bone, uh, the bones are not fully formed and they bleed internally, they hemorrhage. So I would bleed to death. But out of all the hospital children that they had with my disease, I was the only one that survived. And they couldn't understand why I lived past one. So my hurdles began very early in life. And then I just um, grew up from there and I had hurdle after hurdle. <laughs> and it wasn't just physical hurdles. There was also psychological hurdles emotional hurdles, children teasing you in school, picking on you, bullying on you. Is it easy to manage? No, but what life is easy to manage? Monica gets her strength from her faith. Yeah, she's written a very interesting book. It's called Overcoming the Impossible. And she's very strong in her faith. I feel like that me being an author helps give back because it has some practical advice in the book. There's one underlying message in that book, and that is persistence, perseverance, constantly persevering. You have to constantly push, push the envelope. And I plan to continue pushing the envelope. Monica and I love to travel. Uh, and uh, people don't realize it, but <clears throat> um, for uh, someone with a disability, usually um, they need an assistant to come along with them. I had an epiphany and I thought, what if there was a nonprofit organization that paid for the travel expenditures of your caregiver? So transportation, accommodation, and a meal stipend. And um, they, we all went, oh yeah, that's a great idea. So the Canadian Assisted Travel Society came to be, for myself, I don't look for a, a companion, but an actual caregiver, because the person needs to physically help me onto the plane, make sure my chair gets put in the underbelly of the aircraft. They need to physically help me to the bathroom. Some of our clients need physically to be fed because they're quadriplegics. All these personal needs that you most likely take for granted. Hotels might think, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a request. Well, getting in and out of the bathroom is not a request. It's a, it's a must have. And so we spend a lot of time educating the travel industry about uh, the need the special needs of, uh, of people with disabilities. I don't see myself as a person with a disability. I think a person with a disability is someone that uh, doesn't have an imagination of what you can do. I've been to Germany, I've been to Australia, and I go to museums in both, and even the color pigmentation of the paint is different. And to see that up front in, in our history is just, a history of humanity is just, it's a beautiful thing. And to be denied that experience is, is shattering. I mean, what, what this does is it helps level the playing field of my able-bodied counterparts. I'm involved in numerous projects. Um, I am on the board for Cats. I'm writing my second book, and I'm writing a play as well. I'm still volunteering at the moment for Peers on Pages. Um, revamping the program possibly. I'm not trying to be inspirational. I just want to help people. I just feel I'm a little woman in a wheelchair trying to lead the best life I can. And even though 
the odds are stacked against me, I'm still succeeding. So if I'm still succeeding, why can't you succeed?